Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome in brand new episode of Snaps here on YouTube.com. So that volume snap. Shout out at the like button, share it, my friends. Uh, turn my lights here. I forgot to do that before the mm. show. Aaron, what's up, man? How are we feeling today, dog? Ha- happy Thursday. Happy beginning of the NFL Combine. Gets going, I believe, today. So uh, a lot for us to probably break down next week when it comes to that. But, man, happy Thursday. A couple more days till Disney. So I'm getting pretty pumped. Uh, when exactly? Hold on. Let me wow. Get comfortable here. Uh, when exactly are you going? Monday. Monday. We oh, let's go, dude. I mean, figure out next week. I'm a fucking star. I'll hold it down, dude. Don't worry. Go enjoy Disney. Uh, we got it. No worries. Uh, even though maybe we can get some like uh, Disney thoughts from you at some okay. point during the week. Okay. Yeah. Um, I hope everybody's having a great day today, though. Uh, I'm really excited for today's show. So normally, we like to do mailbag on Tuesday. Uh, we did not because we had Chase Daniel on, who was awesome. And if you haven't seen it, um, I cannot recommend enough. Uh, going to check out uh, the interview. It was a lot of fun. It's very long. Chase is the man. Uh, mm-hmm. Jeff Sol says is Perkins moving inside the box. Uh, his choice because he wants to be an inside linebacker in the NFL. We'll get to that a bit later during mailbag. So we got that going on. Um, we're going to talk about this new 14 team playoff that's being bandied about, which I have a lot of thoughts on. Oh, a lot of yeah. uh, well, I don't want to spend too long on it, but but it just. I, I just mean that I started in one place and I'm not sure that it's maybe as cut and dry as where I started. So we'll do a little pros cons game okay. with it. Um, and then ESPN had a great piece. I believe it was Bill Connolly. I forgot to check the author, but uh, it's the, t- yeah, of course uh, it's the 10 most interesting quarterbacks entering 2024. And there's a couple names on there that probably bear mentioning Mm-hmm. that uh, I hadn't really thought about. So we'll give some shine to that and try to pick our one, and then we'll get into mailbag. Uh, as always, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, we love you, and please hit the like button, share all the things that please the algorithmic gods that rule our existence. 14.7K, we're looking for 15. Let's keep mm-hmm. that push up, my friends. Uh, um, all right, we ready to dive in? Let's go. Where are we going first? Uh, we're going to start with the 14 team playoffs. So, um, in case you missed it, we've talked about it plenty. Uh, college football is meeting right now to determine its future. The 12 team playoff is locked in for the next two years. After that, uh, the college football playoff and ESPN have a deal to agree to in principle that would pay the payoff $1.3 billion per year. However, nobody actually knows what the playoff format is. Mm-hmm will look like they're trying to hammer that out right now we talked about maybe the sec and the big 10 break away well maybe not as the latest model that seems to be uh gaining some steam reportedly though it's impossible to know but don't be naive okay there's still a lot of reporting going on that people are talking about breaking away from the ncaa entirely right so like Mm -hmm. everything's being talked about but this is gaining steam and it's the idea of a 14 team playoff in which the Big Ten would have three guaranteed spots. The SEC would have three guaranteed spots. The Big 12 would have two. The ACC would have two. The group of five would have one. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, that leaves three spots mm-hmm. for at-large bids. And if Notre Dame is in the top 14, they would get one of those at-large bids. Um, Aaron, gut reaction when you saw this setup. Why is the SEC and the Big Ten giving away four spots to the ACC and the Big 12? Like, that was my first reaction. I mean, we talked about this, I believe, on Monday or was it last week, where they have all the power. The Big Ten and the SEC, as we, we, you just brought up, the discussion is not over of do they eventually just move on and, and kind of have their own league. But why give up two? I get, I get giving up the ACC can take one spot. The Big Ten can get another spot. But or excuse me, the big 12. I don't want a big 12 team that would, in a, like a, say a, a top 25 is ranked in the twenties gets an automatic bid because they're the number two team in that conference. I just, I'm a little bit surprised that the sec and the big 10 with all the star power in both those leagues are willing to give up a couple more spots to the ACC in the big 12. That was my first uh, reaction. So, my gut reaction was, oh, I hate this. Like, this is the dumbest shit ever. Like, we just got the 12. You? It's a good setup. Can't we just sit there for a little bit? And I was kind of like you. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. 
why was I feeling so negative about it? I think Jake Hester in the morning show did a very good job of kind of helping me verbalize my thoughts where I think a lot of it was coming from the fact of it takes away a little bit of the luster, right? In that right now, um, I still think winning the conference at the conference championship really matters. You have that bye week. It's very singular. There's four bids up for grabs. It's the only way to guarantee yourself a trip to the playoff. Um, now, if you're talking about, okay, well, you know, you're going to get three teams, they're going to get three teams. Does that kind of, does, does it take you away? You still get a buy. The buy is still there, though. I mean, if, if you're worried. But hold, yeah. but hold on, but hold on. But if hold they're on. scared about the conference championship losing juice, you shouldn't be scared with this model because there is still incentive to win the SEC. There's still incentive to win uh, uh, the, I the Big Ten as well. Why? I kind of disagree because, well, well you well, don't want to buy? Uh, not if there's going to be a, I mean, not, it doesn't make that much of, well, hold on. We'll, we'll get there in a little bit. We'll get there in a little bit because here's, because here's where, we'll get into the pros and cons because here's what I would, that was my initial reaction. And I start reading about it, and then I start thinking about, okay, if you're telling me my two choices are we break up college football and form a Super League, or you do this, which I don't think is that binary, but, like, I would rather this. Like, yes, would cheap, would Big 12 and ACC be kind of riding coattails into cheap spots? Um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I prefer that over the full dissolution of college football as a whole. But, again, you don't have to make it that binary. Here's what I got as the pros. Um, Or I'd ask you this. Does it make the regular season more interesting? See, I, I'm in. I'm. I am in the sense of twelve team, fourteen team. The the regular season is more interesting. This isn't college basketball. We're not going to get fatigued with twelve Saturdays of college football. So I don't think there's a fatigue factor that's going to play into this. And I do think, and this is just for me as a player, because I w- I lived through the BCS era. T Bob, you lived through the BCS era. We understood that you work your ass off for seven, eight months, mat drill, spring ball, summer, fall camp. And then if you lose one game, you are essentially yeah. eliminated from the BCS. Well, now in yeah. today's world, you lose two games, you're essentially eliminated from, from the playoffs. So like, I'm me personally believe if you do incentivize more teams and give them an opportunity to win or at least make it to the playoffs, it does make for more interesting games later on in the season. So I agree with you. I have it under a pro. Like, yep. I, I think this leads to some interesting conference watching situations. Yep. Maybe all of a sudden, like Kansas, Kansas state has massive playoff implications mm-hmm. as well as just being a great, like kind of in-state rivalry there. So I, I, I agree. Um, I would say another pro. I like that. It would put a bit more emphasis on conference standings, like objective conference mm-hmm. standings, than subjective CFP rankings. We all know how I, felt about that and um i think a pro is that it has to feel pretty attractive to every conference as long yeah. as the money split is what everybody wants to be and it has to feel attractive to the schools themselves mm-hmm. right uh nobody wants to do this is why louisiana can't get shit done business wise or you can't attract new business the tax code is fucking swiss cheese it's so crazy there's so many loopholes there's so much like ways to manipulate so many breaks, but, but, but so many breaks in different ways that it in fact becomes, it disincentivizes business from coming here because nobody understands like what the fuck they actually need to do Mm -hmm. in that same way. I think as a school, a coach, a conference, it's, this is way clearer in terms of you want to make the playoffs here it is. Okay. Like it's, it's very simple. Finish one, two or three in the conference, one or two in the conference. And so I would say that that, is a pro as well. Do you have any other pros to this system? No, and, and I agree. Like, if, if I am the Big 12, if I'm the ACC, like, I, I walk away from the situation saying, hell yeah, let's go, especially the Big 12. You know, the ACC, if they do stay intact and you have the Florida State and the Miami and the Clemson and the Carolinas, like, you walk away saying, like, we get two, possibly three if we get one of the, you know, the, the three remaining spots when it's all said and done. That's a win for our conference. I think the Big 12, even bigger win for them because – I honestly doubt year in and year out that they would even have one of the top 14 teams in America. Oh, so for they'll, them, get, bro, they'll get they'll get one. I mean, Kansas one. State's really good. You don't think Kansas State could be up in that number? Um, I guess to your point, who else? Like for the Oklahoma Big 12, get, that's what I'm saying. Like, like they get two in there. That's a yeah. big win for that conference. It is a big win. Big uh, win. Now they're gonna have to accept less money. money. Yes. Money's gonna but, have to be the Okay, so uh, now I'll get into some of what I see as some of the cons. Uh, like I said, I think it takes away the luster of some of the playoff spot. Um, here's uh, This is more of a question. Uh, 
Well, first off, uneven strength of schedule does come into play here, right? Exactly what you're talking about. The Big 12 has an advantage because they play less good teams. Um, and so it's, you know, technically less an easier path. Teams, but like, there's not like there's a dominant team in the conference where maybe. No, like there's they're no all the same. They're, they're still yes. the same playing field. So which is uh, why, which is why I kind of like it, even though it is yeah. uneven and it may, you know, as a LSU fan, it may be like, we have to play Ole Miss and blah, blah, blah. But like, you get more, but essentially you're on the same level as those teams, yep. just like Kansas state is on the same level as those teams. Right. So I think there mm -hmm. is a fairness in that. Yep. Um, I'll ask you a question. Would a 14 team playoff disincentivize good scheduling since raw win loss kind of takes over for things like resume. Remember Texas's win over Bama mm -hmm. is what made them the no doubt choice for the three seed last year. Well, I, I think there still needs to be a conversation going forward of, are we going to add it, especially in the SEC, are we going to add a ninth SEC game? And I think if, if you do get to that point where, where all that truly matters is your record within the conference in order to get one of these three spots for both the SEC and the Big Ten, then like I'm not as concerned about three weeks where you're scheduling maybe you know less big competitive games outside the conference. If you can tell me as a fan that I'm going to get at nine SEC games and these are the big games that are going to determine those three spots that are going to be filled from our conference. I'm I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I think you have to add more. You have to add more games within the conference. Uh, At least one more. At yeah. One more. Well, ESPN's got to pay. Also, I think yeah. I'm an idiot now that I actually think about this because it would be your conference win loss is yes. all that matters. So, yes. like, you could be seven and one in the SEC and having lost, like, let's say you lost every game out of conference, you Doesn't would matter. still get a playoff spot. Yeah. So it, it just it, may affect where in the playoff you yeah. get the spot. Yeah. Yeah. Still for sure. 100%. Um, okay. So, so it just puts conference play. So actually maybe that incentivizes good scheduling because you could test yourself and have more error. Um, okay. I'm glad we talked that out. Yeah, uh, and then important. the last, I mean, my other comment would be like, you know, does it, do you need conference championships at this point? You say the two bye weeks matter. Um, if you were to go to this model, I think that would be the kind of proverbial straw for me where you get rid of those games and then you just honor the team that won the regular season championship. And that mm -hmm. rewards a season long of hard work. I mean, we're already moving away from divisions. So it kind of feels mm -hmm. like that makes sense kind of anyway, in a lot of ways. So I think at the end of this, I don't know that I hate the 14 team playoff. And I bet you there that's kind of a lot. I think that's a lot of the same rhythm that probably a lot of these people went through in these conversations. Like, would, would you hate unwieldy it? and it? gross, but it's kind of like from a pros con mm -hmm. standpoint, it doesn't seem like the worst. No, 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 no. I, I, I do like it. Would you hate it though if they did come out tomorrow and said, you know, because I think I do believe the goal is by the end of March, March starts tomorrow, by the end of March, that the plan is set for 2026 of what this playoff is going to look like. If they came out in two weeks and say rubber stamp 14 team playoff, oh, and by the way, we're getting rid of conference championships, would that change your mind? No, I, that's what I'm saying. I think that would make sense to do. Um, I, I've, I've been on it. You know how I feel about that. I've been, I've yeah, been but in the 12 team playoff, I still don't think so. Again, I, I feel like the goal is much more singular. You want to guarantee a spot in, you win your conference championship. It creates interesting situations in a 12 team playoff in which, uh, like you could have a team that maybe won't even make the playoff right on the odd mm -hmm. year where they somehow make it in. And then they manage to win the sec championship. Like, uh, like, like an LSU in 03 against the number two ranked Tennessee or whatever. I mean, I remember going to that game, right? If you do that and all of a sudden you sneak in out of nowhere. So in a 12-team playoff, again, I still think it's holding on to just enough reward. Mm -hmm. But I think 14 breaks us. No, I wouldn't be mad. I think I think if you go 14, you probably have to get the, the one thing that I want the, the one thing that I would love that that would be added into this entire thing if if this is a 14-team playoff. And I don't know how it works financially because of the bowls and obligations for certain bowls to be a part of it. But I would personally love the first two weeks to be on campus. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. Like, if you, if you are one of the teams that gets a buy, yeah, it's great to have a buy. Don't get me wrong. Like, I still take a buy if you give me the option. Like, hey, you either get a home game or you get a buy. I'm going to get a buy. But why not have two weeks on campus? That way, you know, those teams that are the two best teams in the country, the best team in the Big Ten, the best team in the SEC, not only do you get the the reward of of getting that buy. You also get next week on your home turf. Get two weeks instead of one. Uh, Team Crop Duster says Texas Tech beat the piss out of Ole Miss and Mississippi State by combined 76 32 the last three years. Let's not act like middle of the pack SEC is anything special. 
Um, I think it vacillates, but I, I mean, I think there's also a ton, like, I think SEC fans can maybe go a bit too far with mm. the, with the incredible nature of the SEC and how dominant the whole conference is. And certainly there's a lot of losses to point to early last season. Uh, but if you like look into the analytics and, mm. um, Oh, what, what's uh, the SB like the SB plus the Bill Connolly yeah. does? It, it just, I mean, whatever, like bowl records. Like, we, I think we're all comfortable in saying that the SEC is a cut above the mm. Big 12, though, 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 again, cuts multiple I mean, cuts ahead of well, the Well, that's 12. what I'm saying. Yeah, but multiple. that's what I'm saying. But, but the team crop duster's point, like, maybe it's you know, the, the three to two breakdown maybe makes a bit more sense because, like we said, they're on an even playing field, and you know, they those teams do beat these other teams. Well, not. And I, 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 I'll say this, I, I said more of surprised that it was that three three two two one model for the sense of like sec and the big 12 hold or big 10 holding all the power in the room from a health of college football to keeping football a, a national college football more of a national thing where everyone feels included because it's 2024 um that that is the best went, model to do that is the best model to do up. i'm just being honest uh, so so give so out those think, give out those those the, that big 12 team that's not ranked inside the top 25 but you come in second in your conference you're in the playoffs let's do it so Aaron, so you're turning this this is uh now embroiled in the culture wars yes uh the 14 team playoff <laughs> is a is a result of people being soft and participation trophies yeah. Ah, I, actually, I mean, I hate to say it, but I actually said something along similar lines this morning, and now I think that's actually ridiculous. Um, I mean, obviously, the motivating factors here are not participation. Uh, it's it's money, and it's everybody trying to guarantee themselves the easiest paths mm -hmm. to money. And more games means more money. And again, an easier path is desirable to do business in, or a clearer mm -hmm. path mm -hmm. where you know exactly what's expected. But but yeah, yeah, exactly. PG fourteen team playoffs an invention of the woke media. Mm, Fuck true that. Uh, Alex Lundy in the chat. Aaron Murray, you should have spiked that ball in the SEC championship. It cost me five grand. Don't come hey, at me. Alex. Don't Alex. Don't Fuck. you be coming Alex, at me. Alex, it's you fucking can come after, Thursday. You Relax. can come after Mike Bobo and Mark wow. for that one because your boy was running down the field saying spike, 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 spike. Oh, that's yeah, that's um, yeah. Don't put it on me. I, I mean, give that man a CDL. I love uh, the bus driving that you just did, but it's well deserved. Sometimes people deserve to have the bus ridden over them. You know, yeah. what is the truth of the matter? They're the head coach. They should take the bus, you know, just take it for the team. Uh, team crop says, quarterback. I think three and two is fair. Not going to lie. I mean, I, again, I, it sounds kind of insane. I kind of feel the same. I came and I, I, I didn't, I text the group yesterday. This is the dumbest goddamn shit I've ever seen. This is um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was last night. That's what I'm saying. And yeah. it's funny. I, I think my brain has kind of shifted mm. a little bit. Um, Marshall Andrews said, I hope Sankey isn't dumb enough to have this model. Uh, no fucking automatic qualifiers at all. I want the best 12 to 14 teams again. So that's part of the appeal to me of the automatic qualifiers is that determining who is best is sometimes best left. Yeah, in but the like field. not even like, but not even in the NFL, we have that. Like you win, you, you could have a a division team like you know I, I know the nfc south feel like they they always have this you could have like the bucks or the saints at like eight and eight or i guess whatever you know they what 17 games now um and they can make it over a team that has a better record but you won your division you're in so bro the ultimate example is the giants beating the patriots in the super Bowl. there you go there a you nine go. and seven regular season team beating the mm -hmm. undefeated almost 18 and 0 team yeah um so it, there's precedent for it in american sports um mm -hmm. Okay, let's react then to the 10 most interesting quarterbacks in 2024. And uh, it starts with a name that, uh, uh, well, I'll start here. And who would be your most interesting quarterback going into 24? Uh, going, this was a really good list. I'll be honest. Like, I, yeah. I was going through, like, damn, like, I didn't think about that. I had the same that. thoughts, dude. Honestly, like, number six, KJ Jefferson really jumps off to me there. Really? And, I thought he was yeah. one of the more boring answers. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been a big fan of KJ, um, and I remember last year when I had Arkansas I had their spring game, and I went down there, and I'm watching him take a million drops from under center. He's working on the five-step drop and the seven-step drop, and, and I'm talking to Dan Enos, and he's like, man, we're going to turn him into a professional quarterback. I'm like, all right, we'll see how that works. Well, it didn't fucking work. Um, it was an absolute disaster of, of you don't turn a thoroughbred quarterback that is 6'3", 250", 
that can run into a traditional quarterback. That's just not who he is. And we saw KJ take a step back last year. Now you said him. Now he goes to UCF. He's with Gus. He's in a lesser conference in the Big 12. I think KJ can shine next year. I think he has all the tools you want to be a successful quarterback. Big, strong, good runner. Uh, still needs to work on some of the inter intermediate throws, but can throw the football down the field. I think he's due for a big breakout year under Gus. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I, I, I guess I'm a bit guilty of thinking that maybe it didn't matter because, and I'm sorry to Chris Tran, our wonderful producer, don't want to offend, but does UCF matter? Like to the to the to the larger landscape, do you think they're good enough to actually uh, pull off a Big Twelve championship? Uh, I mean, if I they so. are, then, then I think getting, then, I think I think that that conference is wide open. See, because uh, wide open, Utah. I think Utah's a big favorite, but I think like UCF could 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 be a team that could turn from what what six and six last year, six and seven to an eight nine win team. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just, I, I mean, I like the other name on this list. If we're just going big 12, I like Avery Johnson from Kansas state. Mm -hmm. Um, he was, he was like the wildcats, Nico Yamaliava in yep. that he was a big time recruit landed sitting behind Will Howard biding his time Will Howard leaves right now. They kind of forced Joe Milton out in the other case, but Will Howard yeah. leaves. He gets to start in the bowl game and, 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 and he's, he, he, he acquits himself very well. Beats mm -hmm. an NC State team that had won five in a row. NC State was going for 10 wins. Like, if you didn't watch the Pop-Tarts Bowl, that was one of the better bowl games of the entire season. And, and both teams really gave a fuck and really wanted mm -hmm. to be there. And as a freshman's first ever start, he was 14-31, to 178, two tuds, two picks. But then seven carries for 71 and a score on the ground. Uh, gets your team to 10 wins, I think, or did that push him to nine? Either way, um, and look, I'm a big Chris Kleeman believer and what he's built there in Little Manhattan. Uh, so it's like I look at Utah, I look at Kansas State as probably the yeah. favorites there. And so, yeah, I would put Avery Johnson. I like him. Uh, Cam Rise could actually probably be on this list as well, yeah. given yeah, that last year was such a tease and we never saw him again. But um, but the article starts with Drew Aller. Yep. And I think Drew Aller is a great answer. Mm -hmm. Because to be fair, um, last year was probably not as disastrous as we paint it. Uh, the numbers weren't awful. They were awful in the biggest games, yep. but, and they were always conservative. And that's what James Franklin has to figure out. Can he let him go? Can they find some way to threaten downfield? But Penn State is, uh, what did Pate say? The 12 team playoff was made for Penn State, mm -hmm. right? Like essentially, they stand to be one of the biggest beneficiaries. Uh, they got no mission on the schedule. Ohio State's going to Happy Valley. If they can just unlock some success downfield, uh, then Drew Aller it, it could make Penn State into yeah one of the big winners of of, of 2024. No, 100. They, sh they should be one of the big winners of 2024. Um, let's for that. Let, this just goes to the problem of of just society in general. I'm not trying to be like a, you know, I know this is the second time I've brought up oh society issues God. in college football, but like, Bro, we just all want your fucking want, Bitcoin and relax. I am. Like it's been a good day. It's been a good judgment. day for your boy. Uh, it was year one last year. And I know he's a big five-star kid that looks really good. Uh, that can throw it a, you know, a country mile, whatever, whatever you want to, you know, throw, throw at him with, with, with shorts on, but it was still his first season in a really good conference. So like, Year two is always the big jump. We always talk about like year two yeah. is the big jump for quarterback. So with Drew, um, new offensive weapon, they got the receiver from Ohio State. Uh, they got the best, probably the best tandem of running backs or second best tandem of running backs in the conference behind Ohio State. I think this is a big prove it year for me for him. Um, last year was good. It was it was good. It wasn't super sexy like you alluded to. Did not play well in the big time games. Looked like those games kind of got to him a little bit. Yeah. Year two, just speaking from experience, hell, I was six and seven my my rookie year or first for freshman year. Six That's and seven. Crazy. That's crazy. And guess what? I went on to throw more touchdowns than anyone else in the SEC. Oh. So you wouldn't have thought about that after my first year. Not saying that like he's gonna you know go out there and just kick ass, but I went from like mid twenty touchdowns to to mid thirties in the SEC championship game. There is a massive sense of 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 confidence that comes with heading into your second season. Uh, Aiden Chili's at Michigan State says Clint Moses. I'm sorry to say that I don't know much about Chili's. I'll have to look him up. Um, I haven't thought about Michigan State in a while. I haven't thought about Michigan State since I thought about Mel Tucker losing 
tens of millions of dollars for jerking off on the phone. Just the saddest way to lose that amount of money. It's the biggest bag fumble of our time. Aiden Chili's is going to have to earn my eyeballs after Michigan State being involved in a story that ridiculous. Um, I, so you know they had Alex. Yeah, go ahead. I would say, you know, it was interesting on this this list too that I'm personally not not very high on is Miller Moss at USC. I think he's, he's gonna be a rough year. Ones, he's one of the ones that I had as uninteresting because I don't really believe in him either after that ball no. game. And I know like if you look if you just look at the stats, like oh 23, 33, 372, six touchdowns. Like, how could you not be interested? Uh, mm. It's gonna be a bad year for those teams in LA. UCLA, we talked about the other day. Uh, USC as well. I, I think both teams will underwhelm uh this season. Uh I love I love answer number two on Connolly's list because it's a guy I'd never heard of. And that's on me. I don't watch much ACC. Uh, and when I do, it's the biggest teams generally. So I missed Kyron Drones last year, Virginia Tech's quarterback. And you really got to kind of dive into numbers to see why this is interesting. Um Drones started began starting like the third game of the season. Uh, and from that moment on, he finished 19th in the country in total total QBR. And if you look, the first four games, of which he only started two, they averaged 21 and a half points per game. The next five games, it's up to 25 points a game. And then over the final four, they average 43 points a game. They go down, they go five and two down the stretch with their toughest game on the schedule. And Virginia Tech has the most returning production in the country okay and this comes at a time when uh clemson's down uh mm -hmm. i i don't know what florida state is you know i i believe in the florida state coaching staff i hope that they're going to be able to figure out and write the injustice of what they just went through but like yeah the acc has some open inroads to be made and returning that much production including a quarterback making a jump from year one to year two that's a name i had not heard of therefore to me mm -hmm. very interesting because he's potentially set up to have a massive impact next year. Uh, I, and then they got Jalen Daniels on here because why wouldn't you? Uh, in, you stay in, healthy. in terms of Kansas. Yeah, if he can stay healthy. Uh, if you look over the last two years, he has the highest returning QBR of any quarterback in the country. And that includes Carson Beck. Like, you didn't have to play both years because QBR is an efficiency metric. We're not talking volume. Uh, Jalen Daniels actually barely edges out even Carson Beck, who was hyper-efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, Big 12, relatively open. Kansas just paid Lance Leipold $7 million a year. They're mm -hmm. moving in the right direction. I um yeah, I would I I I think that uh I think that he certainly deserves to be on this list. Uh Captain Spartan with a twin dollar super chat. Uh T Bob, I need to know about Mason Smith. My team is looking at him. Uh, and then Aaron, he wants the best donut place in Atlanta. He's visiting in April. Ooh. Uh, debate better song, Louisiana, oh, I, Georgia songs. I got that for you. I got that for you. There's a lot of questions, mm -hmm. a lot of money. What um, else? okay. Uh, Mason Smith, massive potential, was awesome freshman year, caught his first major injury of his career, um, and did not return in the manner that you thought he would. The fly, the, the thing that makes Mason Smith impossible to judge too accurately is he got, he got really bad coaching. This last year, uh, LSU's D-line coach got sick right before the year. They just throw John Jancic in there. It does not go well. I mean, they were doing inexplicable things like lining up like a yard and a half off the ball. Mm -hmm. You stand straight up, way too much hand fighting. So with Mason Smith, the problem is there's not going to be any film there that's really going to excite you besides freshman film. But if you look at his body, that's fucking exciting. Mm -hmm. The man looks like a rock ogre. He's just massive, mm -hmm. dude. And he's athletic. Um, and, you know, hopefully with good coaching a year from injury, he can find that potential that he so clearly has locked up inside of him. Uh, he's he's a late pick to me. Take a take a take a flyer on, I would say. Um, I don't think late pick. I think like a mid round pick. There's not a lot of people that walk around looking like Mason Smith. That's true. Maybe so. I think I think, I think it's a mid round. I think that's a guy that you've 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 seen what he does with the, the potential plus the size. Yeah, I think he's a mid round guy, you know, third, fourth round. You get a nice little, you know, flyer on him. Uh, donut spot in Atlanta, five daughter, five daughters bakery, hundred layer donuts, phenomenal. Go wow. get yourself. Yeah, God, made my stomach rumble, and I've never even had one. Mm. Hundred layers? Mm -hmm. you Is that just a marketing just, ploy? No, there's a hundred layers in there. 
what the fuck so yeah. like thread count the more layers the more delicious that sounds great mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um should Shader shander should be on this list Shander, i mean there's i was going through as we were talking like quarterbacks like man there's a lot of quarterbacks i could make a case for being on this club nick at clemson is a one that i kind of am intrigued year I feel like two that was for last year but i feel you yeah but like is clemson truly dead like, is this, it was, 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 are they truly done? And you tell you me, you're the up? one that told us all they were dead last year and then ended up being correct. I, I still think they are dead, but maybe, maybe it gets better. Um, no, cause we know how good Shadur is. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be surprised if Shadur Sanders goes out there and throws 35 touchdowns and, you know, has a good season. Like he's, he's first round talent. So I'm not like super intrigued by what he's going to do. I know I, I've seen the potential uh and yeah look uh louisiana has better music than georgia and i love both states and i love both states musical scenes grew up with atlanta hip-hop but i mean if you look at like the jazz uh upbringing of what louisiana what do you mean where where this where's this going oh he said debate songs from louisiana and georgia uh, but i'm just saying the music scene in general is better in louisiana we have the hip-hop but you also have the more of the history um mm-hmm. with with like i said the kind of origins of jazz in my opinion and you have john baptiste the singer most single most um talented artist on the planet right now um nico Ar- sure, though just saying he just performed at the super bowl it's kind of a big deal tight yeah i uh, guess where the super bowl is next year aaron i don't know new orleans so I'm guessing they're going to have a Louisiana act perform there too. In fact, if they were real men, they'd have John Baptiste headline, but I don't think they bout that life. Uh, he has to be involved though. Uh, Nico Iamaliava got to be up there. Same thing. He's like Avery Johnson, just in a way bigger stage, mm-hmm. all the hype in the world, Tennessee savior, Tennessee literally put their balls on the line. They've, they've, they've taken the fight to federal court. Yeah, they, almost got, their they, guy. they almost got, uh, some, some sanctions put on them to, to get, nico to uh to knoxville and he's taking over a tennessee program where it's all lined up Mm -hmm. i mean i know people kind of look their nose down at going from 11 wins to nine wins but if you look at tennessee the 15 years previous that's really good still Mm -hmm. like they're moving in the right direction overall and it's a perfect time to them to take for him to take over because the path to the playoff is wide open and again no alabama it matters for every team that had to play alabama every year excuse Mm -hmm. me no save it Kalen DeBoer is still awesome. Don't lose sight of that, but it can't be as good. Yeah, Bo Kenny, T-Bob's got jazz and a little boozy. That's all you need to. Um, so, yeah, I would say Nico as well deserves to be on that list. Well, he is on um, that list, by the way. He's number five. Yeah, yeah, and he deserves to be there. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Bitch. Uh, what about you? Anybody uh, else? Anybody else? Anybody? Uh, there's there's a million different quarterbacks that, that could deserve to be on that list. Um I said Club Nick, very interested with that. Uh, DJU, man, Florida State. You know, you talked about like how Florida yeah. State, you're not sure what Florida State's going to be. You just had Jordan Travis have a hell of a career, hell, hell of a season last year uh, before the injury. Undefeated season, all that good stuff. I mean, DJU, I was impressed with a lot of stuff he did last year there at Oregon State. Wasn't asked to do a ton. Very pro-style offense. You know, throw the ball 20, 25 times a game. Can he pick up? and keep the momentum that Florida State has created over the past few seasons. Um, a lot of eyes on that. A lot of eyes going to be on that game versus, versus Clemson. Uh, Jackson Dart's a good answer from Royal Payne as well, uh, simply because mm. like, if Ole Miss is going to be – if Ole Miss is going to follow through on the hype and make the playoffs and be a true national contender, it's all going to come down to Dart. He's more proven than a lot of guys on here, and so maybe less interesting in that way – but he's also going to be asking – He he's being asked to do things that Ole Miss has never done, yep. which to be fair, he did. He did last year, right? So he's being asked to continue that, which how long can you continue to – I mean, that's like can you continue to do things that never been done? That mm-hmm. seems like an absurd expectation, and yet here Jackson Dart is. Oh, Dylan Gabriel's a I good know, I was Landon Lewis. I literally just had Dylan Gabriel pulled up on a, on a different tab here because um, – I I believe Dylan will have a better year than Bo did. I think Dylan is is I think he's a better thrower. I think he's just as just as athletic. He will go down if he stays healthy as the most experienced quarterback in all of college football history, surpassing Bo Nix. Um, he's not as big, 
But like I said, when you want to check off everything that he does do well, I think I think he's just as accurate, just as good of a thrower, built for this offense. And I think it's going to be the talent around him, which I think you know, Oregon's going to have the talent around him. I think he's due for a big season this year. Um, Royal pages. What if Jackson Arnold's really good? Oh, you could play spoil in the SEC. I just don't see it. Mm-hmm. Um, and not not even because of the bowl game. I think that was an impossible situation for him. I think Oklahoma's just a little behind, uh, very slightly, and their schedule's brutal. And so I don't think it's going to matter that much to the to the larger equation. And no, we're not answering Graham Mertz, Brad. We can't let we can't let Aaron go down a Graham Mertz rabbit hole. Well, I- um, not Graham Mertz, but I think there's one more that I do want to hit on, and I don't even know if he's going to be the starter or or not the starter. Um, but I'm going to go to Nebraska with their their rookie quarterback. Uh, oh, Dylan very good answer, dude. Yes, I mean if you're not intrigued by, we've said it for 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 two years now, uh, <laughs> for not even two years, for a year now of going to hit what Nebraska. Well, it's yeah, that, Matt, that, that Matt Rule in year two, look at the history from Temple to Baylor. Year two is Matt Rule season. Like, that is when he takes this massive stride. Like, we don't care what happens year one. Year two is our year. Well, guess what? If you're a Nebraska fan, you're banking on year two to see that massive jump with a freshman quarterback, a true freshman quarterback. So heavy expectations for Matt Rule year two going into the season with most likely uh, an 18-year-old kid. Uh, all right, let's get to our snaps mailbag. And uh, we're starting today with our guy, Jeff R. Jeff says, what's y'all's favorite head coach OC DC trios mm. now that the carousel is winding down? Aramur, you start. Gotta be Ohio State. See on the screen, Ryan Day, who's that that next tier of, of who's next to win a national championship. He's right there. You bring in an incredible offensive mind. We've we've hit on it multiple times. You've you've given the stats of, of Brian Kelly from UCLA. So you have two of the I would say better Chip minds Kelly. of offensive Chip Kelly. Excuse me, two of the better minds of of offensive football together there at Ohio State with all that talent. And then you've seen the massive progress on the defense side of the football with Jim Knowles. I mean that defense has gotten better and better. It was one of the best defenses in the country last season. They returned the majority of those guys. And then add one of the best defenders in college football. On top of that, those three coaches are really damn good. And together there at Ohio State with all that talent, that's why you know we're we're really bullish that this could be their year finally. Yeah, it's a great answer. Uh, it's impossible to argue with. Michigan would have been on this list. They they can't be anymore because of massive turnover. Uh, I'm going Florida State, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Mike Norvell. I think he is proven to be one of the perfect coaches for the new age where, you know, the, the, the CEO aspect of it means so much more. I think he's a great leader. I I think he understands organizational uh, structure, right? If you look at how they won the transfer portal and how they use that to come back, to finally get Florida state certified back a program thought dead, a program thought to lack investment. Uh, Mike Norvell found that investment, right? Like, that's why Jimbo left. He couldn't get anybody to like put any money behind it, or one of the reasons, right? He's also running into the ground. But Mike Norvell hasn't had that problem. He's managed to galvanize those boosters, galvanize that fan base. And so I think he's a great CEO in the CEO era. And then if you look at Alex Atkins uh, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, the year before he got there, Florida State 71st in EPA. Atkins takes over. They go up to 10th. He's a Broyles Award finalist. In 23, they go up to 9th. Yeah, you're going to lose Jordan Travis. But 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 Atkins is Atkins is work like he can he can train the next guy he can train DJU mm-hmm. get him ready like you said uh, and then Adam Fuller defensively a name that doesn't have the name recognition of Norvell or Atkins but you're talking about an FSU defense that finished sixth in the country in scoring defense and a pretty good offensive conference um, heroic performances out of that defense down the stretch to get them across that finish line and given a big three year extension in the offseason. I feel for them because unlike Ohio State, they don't have a super team to play with here. But the expectations are still going to be very high that you maintain Florida State a lot at the top. Otherwise, everybody's going to be shitting on you. I told you so. Y'all weren't that good last year. Blah, blah, blah. And again, I've said this before, more than just losing the players, everything else, um, the, 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 what they suffered last year 
is a mental blow of the level that can shatter a regime and shatter a program. Mm -hmm. I feel like I saw it firsthand with Les Miles back in the day after the 21 nothing national championship loss to do everything, get to the edge of playoff, and then get denied in the manner that they did. That is a wound that can fester. The only way to stop that is with extra normal leadership. And so mm -hmm. I think these three guys are going to be put to the test. But I love, if you're a Seminoles fan, you should be very excited about the three that you have. All right, we got more mailbag coming up. But first, here from friends at DraftKings. Get in on the action with the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Check this out, guys. If you're a new customer, use the promo code TBOB, T-B-O-B. You deposit $5 or more, you get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000, which if you lose, you'll get that money back in bonus bets, okay? So for me, South Louisiana, I'm a massive Pelicans fan the birds are hot right now. I'm playing props. I'm betting lines. But the point is, I'm supporting the birds. Look, you bet however you see fit. Your favorite NBA team, your favorite trends. It's all there for you. The place to play is at the DraftKings Sportsbook. So download DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code TBOB, T-B-O-B, and new customers get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code TBOB. The crown is yours. All right, our next question comes from Rob G. T-Bob, what do you think of LSU's decision to keep Harold Perkins at inside linebacker? Is it something to worry about? Uh, so if you don't know, Harold Perkins is ranked as like the fourth best player in college football coming in last year. They start him at middle linebacker in the Florida State game. It goes awful. Then they mm. move him some like outsword, outside kind of nickel Sam linebacker position. And he ends up with stats that would be good for like any regular player, but it was the lack of impact that he would have on games that ultimately made him feel invisible compared to what he was his freshman year. Announced the other day, LSU's putting him back in the middle. Somebody asked earlier, is that because Harold Perkins camps want that? Um, I don't know, but I don't necessarily think so anymore. Here's what I would say. I was against it going into last season, and I'm kind of for it now, and it all goes back to Blake Baker. And... Mm -hmm. What's the one thing you want as a player with your relationship with a coach? If I do, can I trust that if I do what this man is telling me that he's going to put me in the best position to succeed and take advantage of what my skill set is, highlight my strengths, hide my weaknesses. I think Blake Baker has proven to be able to do that consistently on the college level. And I point to a couple examples. Damone Clark in 2020 was one of the worst linebackers I've ever seen. He had 63 tackles in nine games. It was awful. In 2021, Blake Baker shows up coaching linebackers. Damone Clark finishes next season, Aaron, with 135 tackles, mm. 15 tiffles, and five and a half oh. sacks. Five and a half sacks. Mm -hmm. Effect, not, not, that ain't, that's aggressive middle linebacker play that's moving him around, that's getting him involved in the pass rush. These are all things you want to see yep. out of Harold Perkins and things that he can do. So, it is all because of the man that you just paid two and a half million dollars that I actually feel like Harold Perkins will be set up there. What's going to hurt him, though, is the their defensive line in front of him. The LSU interior defensive line right now Oof. is Which, one, what, one what defensive line. So it's 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 um, Jacoby and Guillory, who's a starter. Mm -hmm. It's Jalen Lee, who's a backup at best. It's a junior convert transfer, junior college transfer in Shone Washington. It's a true freshman early enrollee. And then it's an offensive lineman, Kimo Macaniole, that just made the switch. Mm. That's going to be tough to play linebacker behind. But yeah. but I don't hate the move anymore because I have faith in Blake Baker. Well, look what he did with Tyrone Hopper. Yeah. Um, Tyrone Hopper is an absolute beast. Built very similarly, about the same size, uh, athletic. Just tenacious, see ball, get ball. You know, plays that inside linebacker position there for Missouri. Um, and you look at what he's done over the past two seasons; it's just been an absolute monster guy that's going to get picked pretty high in the NFL draft this year. If he can get Harold playing like that from the inside linebacker spot, who I think is actually even more athletic than than Hopper is, it's a massive win. But like you said, man, as a as a linebacker, an inside linebacker, you are only as good as the guys in front of you. And yeah. right now, I just don't know how good even Harold Perkins, who's maybe the most athletic linebacker in, in all of college football, is going to be 
if offensive linemen are going to be easily getting off, you know, getting their double teams working to the second level. There, there's not much you can do if you don't have those big boys up front eating up those double teams. How about Bo Davis? Else you paid him a million and a half dollars. Come be the D line coach from Texas. He goes from catching coaching Devondre Devondre Sweat and Byron Murphy to this crew. Uh, not good. Zach says, is Kelly seriously not signing better dealing talent? Well, the problem is last year was so disastrous that an all American and Makai Wingo, a huge potential guy in Mason Smith and a pretty damn good performer in Jordan Jefferson, who I think may have found his way to an all sec team or close to it. Um, they're all gone. They all left. They fucking hated Mac house and they hated their experience last year. And so they all took off, mm -hmm. uh, Lori H our favorite. Shout out the Snaps bingo card. What artists or songs do you listen to as your pump up music? A la Dwight Schrute in the car with Motley Crue. Aaron, what gets you fired up? Dude? I like a little Rainbow Kin surprise. Um, what? A little RBK. A little RBK. You know Rainbow RBK? Kim surprise. Rainbow kitten, kitten, like little bit, little, little baby. Kid. Rainbow kitten surprise. Yeah. yeah. What is this? RBK. You never heard of RBK? No. You seem like a guy that would jam out to some RBK. Um, you just keep saying RBK. No, I've never. Okay, never we'll heard send you of some. Five million monthly listeners. Okay, dude. Let's see yeah. what this is about. Um, I mean, look, like Led Zeppelin is obviously okay. we listen to Led Zeppelin all morning on the show today. That that's always been a big one for me. That's always been my pregame song. But if I'm feeling like I just want to get some fucking juice, Aaron, it's 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 this song right here. It's OSRS Beats, little Sea Shanty 2 Trap remix. Mm -hmm. That's right, baby. PG, put up a picture. The purple cap, Aaron. The rod of the eighth from Sleepwalker. I got it last night. Look at it. What oh, we can't fuck? play. Oh, we can't play the song and the picture at the same time. No. Look at that, Aaron. Do you see that staff right there, bro? Mm. I'll have you know that's a purple staff dropped off a of Twilight Lord Kelris. Mm. Five percent drop. Third time's a charm. Won it with a roll of nine to three. Fired up. Celebrating out here, dude. BFD. I slathered that thing up in that BFD mm. oil the second I got it, dude. I've been working for that staff. Finally got that shit, boys. All it's right, well, Nomer. All right, my number two, little oh. red hot chili peppers. Um, I always love a good little red hot chili peppers. Get the juices going. It's when the levy breaks by Led Zeppelin for me. All right, uh, let's see. Rugsyvid says, T-Bob, thoughts on Apex Legend? You nice in Battle Royales? Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I, I look, I like Apex. I like uh, Fortnite. Like I, I like watching Battle Royales. Uh, no Battle Royale has ever gotten its... Um, it hooks into me. I I just don't know. You know, I, I don't know if it's like a timing thing because I started getting popular right when I started having kids. But like, I never got addicted to Fortnite. I never got addicted to Apex. I've dabbled in all, but um, nothing ever really stuck with me. Yeah, and any Metallica did as, as well. Uh, Royal Pain asks Snaps. Uh, do y'all think a Big 12 ACC leftover group of five division with their own universe playoff and put games on TV on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday would work. Okay, so you take the Big 12, the, the, the lower ends of the Big 12, the ACC. Mm -hmm. You take uh, the vast majority of the group of five, I guess, yep. and or the best ones. You put them together, and then you have your – this is kind of getting into our, like, relegation standpoint where you have your mm -hmm. Super League, you have that league. Uh, the TV on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday is certainly interesting. Yep. Because if we looked at the TV ratings, uh, the chart that we keep referencing about how concentrated college football viewing can be – uh, the Mac does pretty well, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's because they've carved out that Tuesday night Maction sort of slot. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think it could work. Um, but again, I, the, the, the more we get closer to it, the more I find myself kind of falling on uh, against the side of dissolution of kind of college football as we know it. Yeah, I, I, I do too. But I just, it's, it's, I. I'm in the camp of it's inevitable. So like, let's just move on and do it. But I, I do think it would be good for those conferences. You really may not be inevitable though. If you get a six team, I mean, maybe long-term inevitable, but like yeah. six years of a 14 team playoff would still be a lot of, that's a lot of years. That is a lot of years. 
But no, like mid midweek games are great. Uh, especially we, like you said it best. I mean, look what the Mac has been able to do with that conference. So why put yourself as a lower conference on an on a uh, just think of the SEC next year? Noon, 3 30, 7 o'clock every single weekend. Same thing with the Big Ten. Do you really want to be competing with those games week in and week out? I, it, uh, it, why bang your head into that wall? Play on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, uh, in the chat here, uh, Game of Thrones or House of Dragons? Game of Thrones. Uh, what? I mean, Game of Thrones is a seminal masterpiece, or it was until it wasn't. And I was even kind of with it through the, I, I, I mean, I literally was kind of advocating on behalf of the show until, and I've read the books that are out, but I was advocating for the show until the final episode and the final episode, not unlike rise of Skywalker is such a uh, inexplicable abject disaster that it, it should be studied for future generations and how to just completely shatter uh, the most incredible amount of goodwill that you have ever built up. And so it's unfair right now to answer House of Dragons because they haven't had to land the plane, right? Um, but they actually do know how it ends. And I think that they did an excellent job in season one of setting the table. Like that felt like Game of Thrones when it was at its best. So the potential of House of Dragons, I think, is actually higher, although it will probably never reach the cultural impact mm. that game of Thrones did. So mm -mm. It, it's, it's, it's maybe a bit of a flawed question, but uh, so I would say game of Thrones now, but house of dragons, maybe even though the showrunner did have to quit because I think he was like, I think he was like, um, I think it was just consuming his life. I think his family made it. And I have not watched Shogun yet. A lot of people keep telling me about Shogun. There it is right there in the chat on mm. right on time. Uh, it's on FX. I'm going to check it out. Everybody's talking about how badass it is. And that, that would be Samurai stuff, I believe. And Samurai shit's type. Uh, 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 um, what do we got here? Uh, uh, you've read everything George R. R. Martin will write. I've not read it all. I've read a lot of it, but I've not read it all. Um, Duncan Egg is an excellent series. If you want some more uh, George R. R. Martin and Westeros. Um, history mm -hmm. of Gross is really good. I'm purposely not reading uh, the Targaryen history of Dance of the Dragons because I want to, I, I kind of want to see the show first. They, they did okay. such a good job that I, I want to see what they do and then read about When's it. When's your two out? Yeah. When's your two out? Season two. Uh, gotta be this year? End of this year? Uh, I would imagine, but I guess I'm not entirely sure. Um, Let me see here. Do we have any more questions? Questions in the chat? Ah, my chat. Aaron, can you look at your chat? My scrolling wheel has broken. All right, last one. Uh, ask Snaps, which team ends the year at 13, not in the playoffs? Penn State. <laughs> uh, really? No Michigan on the schedule in Ohio State. I mean, whatever. No, it doesn't matter. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm saying like that would be kind of funny if they did end up the season. What was the question? Uh, Not in the playoffs. Which team ends up at thirteen? Who's the first one out? I mean, bro, I, I think I, I honestly think LSU has real potential to be there. Yeah, uh, I think given, LSU, Tennessee, one of those two. Yep, Tennessee, Mizzou. I would throw into that crew. Yep. It's probably mm -hmm. going to be a Big Ten or an SEC team. Iowa mm -hmm. will probably be flirting yep. somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. um, Oklahoma State. Probably be in that range from the Big Twelve. I, I and and that's not that's like literally knowing nothing about the roster. That's just saying it because it's Oklahoma State, and so I, I I could see them. Um, I could see them being there. Oh, was he expected to be hired for Star Wars? Zach, maybe so. Talking about the the God, House of Dragons. The more the more you look at LSU's They're schedule running. next year, the more it's like, man, what a what a what a great year to be a Tiger. Yeah, I think it's friendly. I think it's like think very it's friendly. Very friendly. Yeah. I mean, the hardest. Your two hardest games are Ole Miss and Alabama, and you get them both at home. Yeah. No, it's a friendly schedule for BK Very here in year three. Schedule. Again, if they had a D-line that was even okay, I would be saying that they're a guaranteed playoff team. Yeah. Like, that's how much of an Achilles weakness I feel the mm -hmm. D-line is at this current moment that I think it, I think it submarines them so hard into that they miss or they're borderline playoff team. Yeah. 
They got to get some. Uh, they they got now. We'll see how spring goals ball goes. Maybe some guys emerge because yeah. I will say this: if you can have success against that LSU offensive line in practice, then uh, you're gonna be pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, I think they'll do it. Yep, for today's show. And I see, I see everybody trying to troll me with last Jedi takes. You know how I feel. Um, I'm, you know, I'm fingers crossed there may be something in the works where maybe I get to expose more of my, uh, star Wars takes in the future. But, uh, last Jedi was great and probably the best directed movie in the entire series, just from a pure technical standpoint. Um, Ryan Johnson's beast. If you couldn't see the vision, you know, we just don't agree. Uh, but I think we can all agree that last Jedi was a, a bend the knee to angry fans, just like hodgepodge last jet uh, rise of sky excuse me rise of skywalker rise of skywalker looked like a star trek film like i don't know why jj i don't know why force awakens did it but from its color palette its angles it just felt like one of those jj star trek films um mm, okay i can't i can't i can't i can't i can't with chat right now they're trying to piss me off aaron you have a great day oh wait hold on um all right, we'll y'all What's Landon week? Lewis? What's Landon Lewis? Who's Landon Lewis? This fucking guy. Well, right, we'll was... see y'all next week for a great episode of Snaps Monday here. Appreciate everyone who helped produce it. See y'all then. All right, later, weekend. y'all. See you Monday. Everybody have a great weekend.